Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast we'll be reviewing hemodynamics and taking a look at the various factors that influence blood flow. The amount of blood flowing through any tissue over a certain period of time is called blood flow. It is measured in units of milliliters per minute. The difference between blood flow and cardiac output is that cardiac output is the total volume of the blood flow that is traveling through the systemic or pulmonary circulation every minute. Remember that cardiac output is equal to the heart rate multiplied by the stroke volume. As the cardiac output moves through the circulatory system, Certain factors govern how it is distributed. First, there is the pressure difference that propels blood to move through a tissue. Blood flows from a higher pressure area to a lower pressure area. So the more significant a pressure difference, the greater the blood flow. Also, there is the blood vessel's resistance to blood flow. The more resistance there is, the less blood will flow. Blood pressure is the hydrostatic pressure from blood pushing on a blood vessel's walls and is due to the contraction of the ventricles. It is the result of the interactions of cardiac output, blood volume, and vascular resistance. The highest blood pressure is located in the aorta and large systemic arteries. In a young adult at rest, the systolic blood pressure the highest arterial blood pressure during ventricular contraction, or systole, is around 110 millimeters of mercury. The diastolic blood pressure, which is the lowest arterial blood pressure during ventricular relaxation, or diastole, is around 70 millimeters of mercury. Blood pressure increases as cardiac output increases, but blood pressure decreases gradually as blood flows through the systemic arteries away from the left ventricle of the heart. By the time blood reaches the capillaries, the pressure is around 35 millimeters of mercury. When blood flows through the capillary bed and reaches the venules, blood pressure is around 16 millimeters of mercury. Blood pressure decreases even more as blood moves through the systemic veins and is around zero millimeters of mercury as it enters the right atrium of the heart. The average arterial blood pressure is called the mean arterial pressure, or MAP, and is about one-third of the way between the systolic and diastolic blood pressures. It can be determined through this equation mean arterial pressure is equal to the diastolic blood pressure plus one-third of the systolic blood pressure minus the diastolic blood pressure. We can also use mean arterial pressure to calculate cardiac output. We can divide mean arterial pressure by resistance to generate cardiac output. We can also rearrange the terms to determine mean arterial pressure where mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output multiplied by resistance. This means that if resistance is stable, mean arterial pressure will increase if cardiac output increases and will decrease if cardiac output decreases. Total blood volume also affects blood pressure. The typical adult blood volume is around 5 liters. If blood volume were to decrease, as in hemorrhaging due to injury, greater than 10% of the total volume, then blood pressure will decrease. A small decrease in blood volume won't affect blood pressure much at all, due to blood pressure adjustments by normal homeostatic mechanisms. Blood pressure will also increase if blood volume increases, such as when the body retains water. Vascular resistance includes all of the opposing forces to the flow of blood through vessels. It's the result of friction that is generated between blood and the blood vessel walls. Several factors influence vascular resistance, including the diameter of the blood vessel, the blood's viscosity, and the total length of the blood vessel. 
Remember that the lumen is the inner space within a blood vessel that blood flows through. The smaller the diameter of the blood vessel and the smaller the lumen, the greater will be its resistance to blood flow. Resistance is proportional to one divided by the fourth power of the diameter of the lumen. If a blood vessel's diameter decreases by one half, resistance will increase by a factor of 16 times. Resistance and blood pressure increase during vasoconstriction and both decrease during vasodilation. Blood viscosity is the measure of the thickness or density of blood and is influenced mainly by the ratio of red blood cells to the volume of blood plasma. Plasma protein concentration in blood can also play a role in increasing or decreasing viscosity. The more plasma proteins, the higher the blood viscosity. Resistance and blood pressure increase when viscosity increases. Viscosity and blood pressure can increase due to dehydration or polycythemia, which is an abnormally large number of red blood cells. Viscosity and blood pressure will decrease when the number of red blood cells decreases due to hemorrhage or anemia. The length of a blood vessel also plays a role in vascular resistance. The longer the blood vessel, the higher the resistance. In obese people, hypertension, or high blood pressure, is often caused by the extra blood vessels in their adipose tissue, which increase total blood vessel length. For every extra pound of fat, there is an additional 200 miles of blood vessels. We can measure all of vascular resistances generated by the systemic blood vessels. This is called systemic vascular resistance, also known as total peripheral resistance. The smallest diameter vessels, the arterioles, the capillaries, and the venules have the biggest effect on resistance, while the largest diameter vessels, the arteries and veins, have a much smaller effect on resistance. The arterioles play a big role in systemic vascular resistance and blood pressure because of their ability to change their diameters during vasoconstriction and vasodilation.